Well, fine. Good morning, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. And if traveling for history sounds familiar to you, it's because I have a YouTube channel by the same name. And on my YouTube channel, I offer a variety of topics. Uh, for instance, I film uh, videos of buildings on the National or State Register of Historic Places. So I film a lot of covered bridges, which is a fan favorite. And you know, 1974 seemed to be a very popular year for covered bridges here in Vermont because a lot of them were added that year. One of the uh, covered bridges I have filmed was in Montgomery, Vermont. And actually, all of the towns I'm going to mention today are located in Vermont. So there are six covered bridges uh, in Montgomery. Uh, it has the largest number of covered bridges, not only in Vermont, but in the United States. Now, what I love about these covered bridges, especially that one there, is they have multiple names. So this is officially the West Hill Covered Bridge, uh, but it's, it's also known as the Creamery Covered Bridge, which is on Creamery Bridge Road. It's kind of handy when you're trying to find a covered bridge that they have the roads for them too. And although this is located in, in uh, the middle of nowhere, really, uh, when I was driving there, Google, I used Google Maps, and Google Maps said, turn right. Your next turn is going to be right. Uh, and I'm thinking, well, there is no road. I was on a dirt road covered with leaves because it was fall. And um, yeah, I, the road looked like a driveway. It was also dirt. I mean, I'm not surprised it was dirt, but it was dirt. Uh, but the reason I turned down there, finally decided to turn down there, is because I saw a stop sign on the road covered with a tree, but in a tree branch. But so down there, uh, in what is now the middle of nowhere, there are foundations of, of what had been a creamery. So, but, uh, so this is the creamery, covered, creamery bridge, covered, uh, covered bridge. So that's pretty handy. I also offer recommendations of uh, books, videos, and even magazines. I walk cemeteries. That's something I've, I've done most of my life anyway. And, uh, you know, I remember a saying that says that you're not truly forgotten until no one says your name. So as I walk a cemetery and I'm saying the names of these people by reading their headstones or monuments to my audience, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, well, you're not forgotten right now. I also love to film museums. And if you've been watching my channel, you've been watching a lot of videos I filmed at the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. And if you're loving those, uh, those uh, videos, no worries, I have more for you to see. And let us not, and uh, oh, the, uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now is a, f a, f a fraction of the buildings on the National Register of Historic Places. It's, uh, Astonishing how many of those uh, videos I actually have. Another type of museum I absolutely love, which also holds a soft place in my heart, are historical society museums. They do not get the love and the attention they truly deserve. Now, one of the things I do like about filming historical society museums, and even before I was filming them, when I was visiting them, is how much they show us how similar we are. So for instance, last year in 2022, I filmed, excuse me, I didn't film, I visited the St. Albans Museum. The original name of that museum was the St. Albans Historical Society Museum. And in there, the director was giving me a, a tour, which was lovely. She pointed out this treadmill that a small animal would have walked on, and the purpose of that was to power something that a human would want to use. Once I saw it there, I then saw it again at the Brick School Museum, which houses the, uh, the items from the Georgia Historical Society. I then saw it again at the Sheldon Historical Society Museum. In fact, I was kind of giddy. If you watch that video, I, uh, 
I, uh, I was gleefully looking for it. And sure enough, it was, on, it was at the back wall. So they have one there. And then again, when I visited the South Hero Bicentennial Museum, video coming soon, look for it on November 1st. But they also had one down in their basement. Now, uh, one of the uh, people there had said to me, well, the, uh, these small animals would have walked it, maybe little kids would have walked on it, which would make sense. It would be a, a t a tantalizing to a little kid. And there's powered a butter churn. Now, I also visited the Lincoln Historical Society Museum. Now, they don't have one of those kinds of treadmills. Do you know what kind they have? I hope you're sitting down because this is wild. They have this humongous treadmill a horse would have walked. And that horse, horse powered, don't you know? That horse powered a drag saw. A drag saw is used to cut trees that have fallen. It, it, I'm still, I'm still just <laughs> gobsmacked by that. It's, it's, it's just wild. So I love historical society museums for, you know, certainly that and, and the fact that they need more love and attendance and all that good stuff. Also on my channel, you'll find that I offer shorts videos. These are videos that are under one minute long. And uh, they are on any topic whatsoever because the thing with history is everything falls under its umbrella. It's fabulous. So everything is fair game. In fact, today's video, which is a short video, is uh, a daddy long legs crawling on a headstone. I, had been, I was filming in the cemetery this uh, American Civil War veteran. When I turned around to leave, uh, to walk up the road to find another one of those men, I noticed movement out of the corner of my eye. And sure enough, a daddy long legs. And uh, what the heck, why not film that? And, and that, as I said, is today's video during Halloween week. Other shorts videos topics would be weather, nature, heavy machinery, and everything else in between. I have a lot of shorts videos on my channel, something for practically everyone. In fact, last year, I'm pretty, I was pretty excited by this, that I actually captured snow starting to stick. And when I posted that video and had that bit of a description, one of the commenters said, well, you know, snow is supposed to do that. <laughs> Well, yes, yes it is. So I mentioned these, uh, this Civil War veteran and uh, it's because I offer videos on people. And if you've been watching, you've likely seen this series I've had. I, I have a lot of them. I've been looking for 34 of these men buried at Prospect Cemetery in East Middlebury. Of those 34, I have found 30, 30. Now, for the most part, I have their enlistment information because I found a website that has all these things. Some of them, though, have an obituary. And what I'll say about an obituary is uh, there's one whose video has not gone live yet where the obituary was so well written, it was clearly it was clearly written by someone who knew the person and respected him greatly. It's, um, it's an amazing obituary. And an even smaller number have a photograph. Let's think about that for a moment. These men have been dead for well over 100 years, and some have a photograph. So putting a face to a name, a face to a headstone, is intriguing. So why on earth would I want to host a TV show since I have a YouTube channel? You know, that's a valid question. It's one I even asked myself. But um, so I have a working document, if you will, and with a few ideas. So for instance, if I find information on any of the videos I have on my channel, I want to share that information here. So 
so for instance, I have filmed a building on the National Register of Historic Places, and that building is called the uh, Lewis and Philemon, Captains Lewis and Philemon Daniels House. It is far less about that house and far more about Philemon Daniels. And that's because she made international headlines. I'm going to leave you with that teaser. You can watch my video on my channel for that, for the rest of the, that particular story. Thing is, a few months later, I found more information on her, and uh, so I'll share that here. This was a remarkable woman who deserves to be filmed, talked about, have her information shared. Now, I want to also offer behind the scenes information. You know, it's, it's stories, really. It's not, it's far less about information and far more about stories. It's the stuff that goes on. Besides the fact that I wonder how I get anything done on some days, uh, you, you may be surprised by other things that happen. So, in fact, I want to share one of those stories uh, now. So, uh, sometimes people make requests. I can't always fulfill those requests, and, and uh, that is a bummer. But in 2022, I was asked to create a video on Highgate Manor, which is located in Highgate, Vermont, near the Canadian border. What I loved about that particular assignment was the fact that I was able to get two videos out of the one request. And why would I get two videos out of that? Well, it's because the, the um, first video was the history of the building itself. And the second video was its haunted history, which is fantastic. Um, so let me start with sharing my experience of driving up there. I was on Route 207. I knew that, that um, Highgate Manor was located on 207, but I didn't know where, except I knew it would be in Highgate. So I'm driving along. I had just entered Highgate, and, um, and I'm sort of waiting to see it. And as I was driving, all of a sudden, I was hit by an absolute wall of bad vibes. Ever since I was a little kid, I've had um, feelings about things. I am not psychic. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that every now and then I get a feeling about something. And this was a wall of bad vibes. And you know what I saw next, immediately on my left? Highgate Manor. Now, across from Highgate Manor, is a church, and behind the, behind the church is a cemetery. I knew I was going to film the cemetery first because it was, it was um, almost dusk, and I, I, it's easier to film in a cemetery when it's a bit lighter for safety reasons. There are low headstones, and I did not want to trip and fall. That's, no, just no, just no. Um, especially since there was some snow still on the ground because it's filming in March of last year. So I'm in the uh, cemetery. I found the Baxter family, and we can see this, this um, uh, picture right here. And um, I was specifically there to film uh, Dr. Baxter, the, uh, the, who owned Highgate Manor. <laughs> it's... Uh, Handy how all this works out. Now, I was there to film. So I filmed, uh, I filmed um, a video and uh, didn't really like that video, so I deleted it. 
and filmed the second one. Now, this is fairly common, actually, when I'm out. Uh, there could be problems with the first video. There could be just, I don't like the first video. And I film a second video. No big deal. I didn't like that video either. Huh. That's okay. So I filmed a third one. I didn't like that. I didn't like the fourth one, the fifth one, or the sixth one. When I filmed the seventh one, okay, all right. I like this one. I, 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 seven videos. Seven. Holy cow. At this point, it is now dusk. The sun is uh, definitely going down. What you don't see uh, is how dark it is necessarily. I, can, I know that, but my camera makes it look lighter than it is. So that's great for filming uh, for you, but I know how much darker it is in real life. So I went to film the, the Highgate Manor next. And... Uh, I'm standing out there, first of all, yeah, so you see this 8,000 square foot house, and um, I'm standing there to the right on the, uh, across the street. The, I filmed the first Haunted, I, I, I filmed the uh, history video, and that was fine. One take, boom, boom, done. Second video, which was the Haunted video, um, I filmed it once, I didn't like that one. I filmed it a second time, didn't like that one either. Filmed it a third time, nope, no go. I filmed a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, and a ninth time. I didn't really like the ninth video, but it was the ninth video and it was getting darker. And um, I really just wanted to start heading home because I didn't know the roads all that well. So I accepted that video. A few days later, I was up in that area again. I knew I was going to be going by there to uh, go to another area and decided, all right, I will stop and film this haunted one one more time. And if this done, doesn't work, I'm going with the ninth. So I filmed the 10th video. And wouldn't you know it, I liked that one. So bizarre. This is a, this, one of them, the, uh, the graves of uh, Dr. Baxter and his wife. So Dr. Baxter had, uh, had his practice in his house. This was exceptionally common. And uh, quite frankly, when I was a little kid and saw a pediatrician, that pe pediatrician had his office in his home. Granted, that was over 50 years ago, but um, who's counting? So, so this is a very common practice. Now, Dr. Baxter also had an operating room in his house. Supposedly, uh, which is now a library, and supposedly you can still see the blood stains on the floor. Rumor has it that Dr. Baxter experimented on his children and most did not live to see the age of 10. Those children reputedly haunt the place to this day. Now, this particular area of the house, since it's, it is supposed to be haunted, and this was a stop on the Underground Railroad, which makes a lot of sense because the Canadian border is pretty close. This side of the house is supposedly haunted by a, an African-American man. And Highgate Manor is a gorgeous house. You know, um, as of the filming of this video, it was, it was on the market in January 2023. And you can see video, uh, pictures rather, you can see, I have videos on the brain. You can see photographs of the interior of that house. Pretty impressive. Well, it's 8,000 square feet and uh, definitely, uh, I mean, it has that uh, cupola on top and it's, it's spectacular. So, as I ponder things to uh, share with you, another P 
piece I'm thinking about is uh, having guests. I, I have, uh, I actually have one who, who may be able to come on next month, so uh, in November, so how fantastic is that? So I'll be reaching out to some more people I know to, to join me here and uh, have a chat with because who doesn't like to learn about um, people and uh, what they do, uh, places they, they volunteer or work. So a variety of historical society museum people I'll be reaching out to. Uh, so should you folks be watching, expect an email. Oh, by the way. <laughs> so um, that's another piece I'm thinking about. So if you have any suggestions of topics uh, you'd be interested in learning more about, um, I'd be happy to share. Now, after I leave here, I plan to uh, film at least two places, maybe three. And uh, there's no mistake why I wanted to start this channel before Halloween. Halloween is my favorite holiday of the year. Thanksgiving is tasty. And um, who doesn't love to give uh, and receive gifts for Christmas, right? But it's Halloween. It's Halloween. And that's because Years ago, I had co-owned a second-hand toy store called Janet's Thingamajigs. On Halloween, these little kids, you know, three or four-year-old kids, would come in dressed in costumes and was with their faces painted. I remember one little kid had uh, the face painted with the whiskers, and this little one was wearing uh, a lion's costume with the huge mane and a tail that was, well, dragging on the ground. Absolutely adorable. And to think that that kid is now pushing 30 is remarkable, but so adorable. The other reason I love Halloween is the spooky stuff. Who doesn't love spooky stuff? So when I was uh, a little kid, I was watching these, these uh, scary movies in the 70s. Looking back on them now, I've watched them as an adult. They're schlocky, absolutely, but they're still kind of spooky. And certainly because my mother enjoyed these old black and white films, lots of atmospherically spooky haunted house stuff. Uh, absolutely love that stuff. Still love it now. So I really wanted to offer this video because of uh, Halloween. So the places I plan to go after here, it's uh, kind of interesting. One, uh, one is uh, I, I can't park on the road because of what appeared to be culverts on either side. So that's a no-go. And if it's unsafe to park, you can bet your sweet bippy it's going to be unsafe to stand on the side of the road. Not that that has stopped me. I have stood on the side of Route 7 with tractor trailers going by. Whew. I've also stood on the side of Route 2 uh, because I was filming something I couldn't film closer to the uh, space. Now, this is on a stretch of Route 2, the place I want to film today, uh, which is a pretty busy road. It's a main thoroughfare. So, cross my fingers, wish me luck, as I decide if I want to take that risk. It's a Halloween display. It's a phenomenal Halloween display. So, that will likely overrule every bit of common sense I may still have. The, uh, and the other is a cemetery. The cemetery has the creepiest vibes I've ever experienced in a cemetery, and I have walked oodles of them by now. You can look at my channel. I have, I have, a, I have a Vermont Cemetery playlist. I have a uh, Lakeview Cemetery playlist. I have uh, two different Green Mount Cemetery playlists because one is in Montpelier and one's in Burlington. I have walked a lot of cemeteries. But this one gives the creepiest vibe, creepiest vibe. And there, I should be able to get three videos today, three, the creepy vibe one, the uh, fact that it's a cemetery, and there's a section on uh, Revolutionary War soldiers. I think people would, be, would find those interesting as well.
And then whilst I'm down that way, I may as well go back to Prospect Cemetery and uh, see if we can find those last four men. So, so in coming months, I hope to have guests because, you know, understand, although I have almost a thousand videos on my channel, most of my videos I'm not even in. My philosophy is you want to see what's in front of the camera and not who is behind it. I could be wrong on that notion, but I'd rather see what someone is looking at myself in a video than uh, what they look like, which is perhaps unkind, but show me what you're looking at. So, as I would say in uh, any one of my videos as an ending, is uh, I appreciate your watching. And uh, this is uh, Patricia, and I am traveling for history. Until I see you again, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks for watching now. Bye now.